So for video captures, uh, we actually had uh, quite a bit of interesting video. But for the most part, all of it fell underneath uh, that realm of not being able to identify exactly what it is. And uh, so I didn't present it in the main video. Um, yeah, there were some strange lights and uh, some strange uh, eye shine. But... Uh, you know, without proper identification and not being able to say, hey, um, this is what I believe it to be, you know, 100%. Um, I didn't include it in the original video. Just a little bit, yeah. So, what's going on here in this video? Well, as surprising as it may seem, we didn't come to this area to investigate the culvert itself. It just so happened that all the captures that we had surrounded this culvert, uh, and hence, that's how the video got its name. Now, uh, I'm not, you know, an authority on videography. Uh, I'm not an authority on audio by any stretch of the imagination. I'm learning. I'm trying to learn them both. Uh, but I do have an increased knowledge base as far as thermodynamics uh, and how, uh, as we call them in the hunting community, thermals um, react uh, with air. And knowing that, you know, in the evening, you know, your cooler thermals go down, so your cooler area or your cooler air is uh, concentrating in the bottom of valleys. In the bottom of a valley, there's almost always a, a water or a creek source. And so there could be uh, definitely an atmospheric condition where we have much colder air surrounding this culvert area uh, that's... Uh, allowing for my breath to be captured on video. Um, the odd part about it is that there's only one capture and there should be more than one. So uh, what I'd have to do and what I plan to do is go back and investigate it again, but this time use thermal equipment that I do have uh, to check the area. Now I don't have like thermal cameras or anything like that like that, but I do have ways of measuring uh, ambient temperatures versus uh, localized temperatures. Okay, yeah, there's a red one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. 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 Uh, this capture here I have uh, no explanation for. Uh, Mrs. T uh, had came over and asked me how to start the phasm cam. Uh, which I showed her, and then almost immediately we get this uh, capture, which sounds like, to me, it's saying the name Laura. Um, that is not Mrs. T's first name, so uh, I can't really say what it is. Um, once I got the camera started, I turned around and started working on uh, the Zoom microphone mount, and the and my own camera mount as well.
I was able to find this capture on all of the recording devices. Uh, the marked ones, you know, are what they say they are. The unmarked ones are the microphones uh, either on my uh, cell phone or on the uh, Phasm Cam. Going through all the recordings again, um, I did find that uh, this particular oddity uh, repeats. So this capture happened twice, and uh, which leads me to question if it's something that I'm doing. Am I doing like a, uh, a breathy sigh and not realizing it? And, uh, you know, without having like maybe a, a, a microphone directly attached to me, um, or, you know, in some cases, um, Mrs. T, uh, there's no two way for me to uh, figure it out uh, this might be why a lot of these uh, shows show people walking around with ir cameras pointed out with then an ir cam stuffed in their face uh, so they can rule out that you know it wasn't like a you know a breath moment or sigh moment uh, you know things that we do you know that <sighs> i made it uh, type uh, talking to oneself or uh, just, you know, a breathy reflection uh, that one states. <laughs> it used to be Never light up. This is another capture I caught on all the uh, recording devices. It used to be. The old flashlights would never light up. No. It used to be. The old flashlights have never light up anything like this. Now, after hearing it, uh, I again have to question, is this something that I'm saying under my breath and not realizing it? Or, you know, is it actually you know, an EVP? I'm not certain because I can't see myself and I don't have, you know, uh, a microphone up close. So, uh, you know, I could actually be the source and not realizing it. Yeah. I'm walking off the road. Now this particular capture uh, I extracted and was able to loop and uh, here it is.
Now, when going back through and re-examining all the captures again, I actually should have caught something and questioned something um, long before uh, I had let this video uh, or let the original video get this far. And, uh, but I didn't. Um, and that's, that's a failure on my part. But when I compare um, the original videos to uh, the other videos or Mrs. T's videos, uh, a different image comes out. Anyway, I feel fine now. I don't know what that was all about earlier. That was weird. What's that? Yeah. And I'm walking off the road. What's that? Anyway, I feel fine now. Feel good. I don't know what that was all about earlier. That was weird. Hmm. Oh, you said the camera was acting up too. What's that? Said your camera was acting up too. Yeah. Right. I'm walking off the road. <laughs> Easy to do. That's why I've been okay. walking around the double yellow. By the way, I feel fine now. I don't know what that was all about earlier. That was weird. What's that? Yeah. And I'm walking off the road. What's that? Anyway, I feel fine now. That's it. Hmm. And you said your camera was acting up too. Okay. Said your camera was acting up too. Yeah. All right. I'm walking off the road. <laughs> Easy to do. That's why I've been okay. walking right on the double yellow. So right now I have to believe that the actual source of this audio oddity is Mrs. T and the reason that this oddity was created is once again uh, when I stepped off the road or whatever I turned the microphones away from her which caused a distortion and uh, then when I turned the microphones back and I actually got in between the microphones and her um, that's what caused the distortion and, uh, yeah, uh, I believe that's exactly what this is. It's a distortion. So, uh, in conclusion, um, you know, first off, we need to take into account you know how the video got to where it was um, because there's a couple behind the scenes things that should have happened that didn't um, there was a large daylight portion that should have happened but it didn't because uh, we didn't stick with uh, the plan as far as timing um, another big part of it too is when we got on ground uh, we had issues with hardware because it started doing firmware updates, which ate a lot of time. So uh, that kept us from actually going to where we wanted to go. And we ended up going back to this culvert uh, area. And again, it wasn't supposed to be out the culvert. Uh, we were just hoping to go out and do a night walk and, uh, you know, possibly catch 
some sounds, and actually we caught a lot of barn owls, which was pretty cool. Now, the evidence itself, um, we talked about each one somewhat, with the exception of like the first capture. Um, that does sound like a female voice. Mrs. Trackway is talking, so it's not her. Um, as I recall, she had her back to me, showing me the front or the uh, the V screen of the camera uh, when we're trying to get it started. Uh, once we got it started, I just turn and start working on gear. Um, so, you know, as far as that capture is concerned, wasn't expecting it. It came out of nowhere and um, if it's an EVP, it's an EVP. Uh, I don't really have an explanation for it. Uh, going on to captures, that could have been me. Could, you know, that was a big learning lesson as to why, uh, and somebody should give these guys credit for doing this. Wearing the uh, two directional rigs, you know, having a camera pointed at their face while also having a, a camera pointed out um, in the direction of movement that they're going or uh, in the direction of whatever sound that was developed for the Finding Bigfoot crew. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna get rocks thrown at me for mentioning it. But you know, that part of the program you know they did that for a reason and it really stood out so that you know in going back and looking at any captures that they might have had on the way out they had a rig that um, could show that they themselves was not you know causing an audio capture you know you could see whether or not their lips were moving and uh, when you that wasn't just only for the audience, that was also for uh, those that were interpreting the capture themselves. And when you're out doing it, and um, as uh, an audio specialist has told me, uh, there's times when you can create your own audio oddity and not realize it. And, um, which, you know, uh, proved in a previous video, proved it in this video with that, uh, last capture with the strange sounds. Um, now some may want to say, well, you know, it's, it's a vetting process, you know, going back through your own stuff over and over and over, which I did. Uh, also, you know, not having the proper tools because I'm trying to do all this on basically a cell phone. Uh, and, but developing those tools as you go. This is, that's another thing too. You don't automatically uh, get these tools in your toolbox uh, as far as audio, video, and everything as you start. You, you've got to develop them. And um, unless you go and you spend the money for somebody to take their time to teach you how to do things uh, and find the path of discovery on your own, uh, you can't really expect people to mentor um, what you're doing. And if you really want to send something off to a specialist for them to, to vet it, you, know, you also have to take into account that that specialist might have it has, it, has their own schedule. So it, it could be a day, it could be an hour, it could be a week, it could a month, be a month, it could be a year uh, before that specialist or subject matter expert that you sent something to, uh, to get back to you. So uh, <clears throat> really, you know, you pretty much got to become self-reliant or develop uh, a community that uh, can practice kind of like a group mentoring um, type situation. And I think that, uh, no, I'm, I'm certain that Matt Lawson uh, has brought that uh, concept up. So, uh, yeah, in, the, in 
going out there and doing this walk too, I need to point out that it's not my intention to go out and find that paranormal stuff. I'd actually rather stay as far away from that as possible. Uh, I'm just going out there. And I, I'm hopefully going to find some uh, wild critter uh, um, or something to explain experiences that I've had uh, over the last 40, 50 years. And, uh, yeah, I got to be honest, so far in the game, not doing too well. Um, not doing too well at all uh, as far as uh, staying away from that um, category. So, yeah, but also at the same time, uh, developing, you know, staying away from that category, got to develop the tools, got to uh, also have on hand the correct tools. So, uh, and learning from the experience. So from this takeaway, one of the things that I've already started on is implementing a, a, uh, a dual channel uh, microphone system. So, you know, know exactly what each other is saying. Uh, and on the same um, uh, audio capture, as well as running the, uh, the separate microphones as we do. And uh, I really want to get away from in, uh, doing the walks. I just want to sit and watch uh, a lot more. But uh, again, that's a timing thing. That's a planning thing. If... You know, when you're sitting, you can just sit and cover area. But, you know, if you're late or whatever, you're going to have to cover ground. So, uh, thanks for watching. Um, like I said, I wish that one was a home run, but it wasn't. Um, but, in terms of learning, it was a home run. You learn from your mistakes. And uh, I'll see you down the road.